Boy, what a nice nap that was both enjoyable and refreshing. I wonder what time could it be? <gasps> oh, jeez. I really messed up this time. I gotta hurry up and make a doll for the Donkey Kong Country video game series. Maybe I can ask my buddy DK for help. Hey, DK! Hey, DK! DK! Wait, what? Oh my god, where my buddy DK at? Huh? Huh? Oh, hey there, Chumpy Kong. What's that? You say that DK's been ape-napped? You say that Donkey Kong went out to find who stole his precious banana hoard and got captured by a gang of elephant pirates and no one knows where they've taken him or even if they'll bring him back alive? Oh. Want to help me make a sock doll? All right, apes and ape bets. On today's episode of Let's Stitch, we are making a wonderful, beautiful friend. It is. Chum Chucker Charlie from Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. This was a big boy, and so I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time. I'm just gonna jump right into it. So let's talk about the supplies. So for this doll, I used one pair of tan socks, a white woolly sock, a sheet of tan felt, a sheet of brown leather, and a sheet of light tan leather, silver brads, one pair of tan buttons, one uh, dark blue glossy button, needle, and of course matching thread, a seashell beaded necklace, a small woven basket, and a blue handkerchief. I've also got a paper and pen, scissors, uh, a chopstick, blue paint, blue dye, and bleach. Starting off, I'm gonna take my two tan socks and dye them with this Rit liquid dye. Bought this at Michael's, four bucks. No one ever said this was a cheap hobby. One of the socks will actually stretch over this brick I made from some styrofoam and an old t-shirt. A small container is all I need for the first sock with a little bit of dye and hot water. Using my girlfriend's makeup brush and some old t-shirt to keep my work surface clean, I can get to work brushing the hot dye onto the stretched out sock. I'm painting the dye onto the sock because the brushing is going to give me that nice, succulent gradation of color between Charlie's body and his belly. It means I'll have to do more than one pass, but I'm okay with that, for the sake of art. The other sock is just going to be dunked in a cup of hot dye. While I wait for those to dry, I'll take this basket I got off the internet for a buck fifty and start turning it into the chum chucker basket. First I've got to get the handle off and it's just balsa wood, it's really soft, so I cut that right off and sand it down all over. And then I just have some markers to bring this to the color I want. I didn't mention I used markers in the supply list, but I used markers, so... Anyway, with the socks dry, I can go ahead and start building the body. Cut the foot above the heel, as well as uh, took off the ankle. And now I can get to sewing. I'm gonna flip the sock inside out and close the head of the sock with the running stitch. The running stitch is as simple as dipping the needle in and out through the fabric. Clean and easy. What's great about the running stitch is that I can just pass the needle through really quickly in one go. Then I just flip it right side out again and stuff it up. Then I can close it using the ladder stitch. The ladder stitch is like building a ladder, just up like the leg and across like the rung. This keeps the seam taut and neatly concealed. It's my favorite stitch, I use it all the time.
Now that that's done, I'll set that aside and cut the legs out. I'll cut the foot piece straight up the middle and then sort of in half. Similar to the body, I'll flip the leg pieces inside out and running stitch them, leaving a gap on top to flip and stuff these little sausages and then ladder stitch them to the bottom of my Charlie bod. Then I took the rest of the foot piece and made uh, the, the, the feet. I didn't intend it, but I actually running stitched the pieces closed, but that's fine. I just cut a hole in the top, stuffed it, and ladder stitched the feet to the legs. I noticed the head was a little too uniform with the body, so I used the ladder. And the arms are built to be thicker at the forearm than the upper arm, as well as a little detour to make out the thumbs. If you see my DDD build, the hand is smaller, but with uh, just a longer uh, uh, thumb. And when that's stitched up, I just cut the fabric loose stitch to bring the head more it. forward. This is where the chopstick is handy, and uh, stuffed it. It's important to keep the stuffing consistent in these long pieces, so rolling it helps. And then ladder stitch them both on. The arms are sticking out a little bit too far, which is easily fixed by taking my thread and ladder stitching them to the back and bringing the arms closer to the body. Charlie also has some blubbery shoulders, so I'm gonna pad him more with two more strips of my sock and after rounding off the top sides to sort of a point, I start ladder stitching around the neck and over the shoulders. I compare this to sculpting a lot and it's times like these where I think that's an obvious connection. How I'm stitching a little and stuffing and stitching some more and stretching it until I get it to where I want it to be. Now's a good time to take care of this bleeding that happened with my blue dye. You see that ridge down the center? I'm gonna fix that. With about one part bleach and two parts water, I use my brush to get a small application of bleach over the belly. This will lighten it back to its original color. Look at that. Neat. Okay, so now I'm gonna make the bottom lip, which is made by essentially doing a running stitch to pick up the fabric in a way that creates a ridge in a half circle. And since the foot of the sock was dark, I can use that to create a mouth hole that is ladder stitched to the lip. And now it's time for Tusk. So uh, these shell pieces, right? I got them, again, from Michael's on sale for about $2. I like that I can use materials that keep with the ocean motif, so these shells are a cool addition, I think. I pulled them off a string to figure out which one fits best, and stitch those to the lip. Basically a ladder stitch that helps anchor the tusks down so they don't wiggle too much. And with a few pieces cut from my sheet of felt, I made up the mustache, and ladder stitched that to the face. Uh, for a little bit of depth, I pulled out my marker and shaded the edges a bit, then Added another layer of felt on top. Shaded that too. With some more scrap from the toe, I've made a little nose by cinching around the edge of the fabric with a running stitch, and ladder stitching around the face to shape it the right way. And at this point, I noticed that the back doesn't have nearly the hump I'd like it to, so I took the ankle from one of the socks and shaped that over the back like I did with the shoulders. He still didn't end up quite so hunched over, but I'm not much too bothered much to buy it. So, uh, hey, what do you want me to do? I chose tan buttons for the eyes because I thought white would be a little bit too striking. And now to build the skirt. I've got my sheet of tan, faux leather, and I'm going to mark out all the strips I need. I think both pieces of leather cost me around $10, but the look is going to be worth it. The texture of that leather over that smooth cotton sock, man. Hmm. Anyway, I've laid out all my pieces on a sheet of paper, and I'm going to get to painting these over with my blue paint. In the game, Charlie's skirt is made from driftwood, and the paint is sort of worn off. This should give me a similar effect, but without the wood grain texture. While I wait for that to dry, I'm gonna get to work on a tedious task, pulling out my blue handkerchief. 
I guess it's uh, not really a handkerchief, but a large square of this cool blue tie-dye fabric. And it came with its own little cardboard for making a fish pattern. This fish is really simple. It's not all that necessary to make these super detailed. The base is just a long oval, a bit more pointed on the nose and I'm cutting with the fabric folded over once to make it easier on myself. And the fins are a rounded triangle for the top or dorsal fin and a sort of butterfly wing for the tail fin. I'm flipping the pieces wrong side out and I'm stitching the body in two places along the top between the back of dorsal and tail fin and then all the way around the bottom until I reach the front of the dorsal fin. So I've got a hole for the dorsal fin and the tail fin. Then I take my choppy stick and flip the fish's right side out. It's a bit more difficult when the fabric is uh, much more rigid compared to a cotton sock and stuff each of my fish pieces before stitching it together. The fin I put on with a running stitch to create a bit of separation between the fin and the body. The tail fin I put on with a ladder stitch so that it looks like an extension of the body. Then I can stitch the eyes on in a little X shape. Uh, it's like, you know, doing a button, just without the, the button part. Do this nine times. And you know, we thought we were done with the body, but we're back at it again, babe. This time we're gonna create the digits on the hands and feet. I'm not a fan of this look on store-bought dolls because it's usually just a big loop over the hand and that's it. But with some tiny stitches to reinforce it, we can make a pretty convincing set of flanges. And who doesn't like saying flanges? Flanges! And now I've got my brown faux leather. From it, I'll make my two belt pieces and my two arm pieces. My skirt is dry, so I can lay those pieces out. They fit nicely. And here come my little pack of brads. They've got these two wings underneath to secure them, so I poked a hole through the leather with my scissors and start punching in those brads. And with all of those ready, I'll take my fabric glue and adhere each piece to the belt. Well, I guess you're right, Chumbly Kong. I never did mention that I need fabric glue at the beginning of this video. <laughs> shouldn't set a bad example for kids by drinking bleach on the internet. <laughs> Holy sh**, you're one smart gorilla. So, with these glued onto my belt, I'll move on to the arm braces. I've got this thick woolly sock, and I cut a band that's a bit wider than the leather strap. Peel the loose bits off the edges, and uh, stitching through the leather can be a bit tough. If you have an upholstery needle or a leather working needle, that will definitely help, but a standard needle is fine. A thimble is also great, but I've got a scrap piece of leather to protect my thumb from the pushing if the needle needs a little extra help. <coughs> oh god. And then I can take my yellow leather strips and cut some holes in the wrist guards to feed the strips through. Once it's fed through, I didn't need a reason to knot it or anything. It should stay just fine once it's pressed in. The belt straps, on the other hand, are getting glued from the back. And my little blue button needs to be sunken into the belt, so I cut a nice big hole in the leather and stitch the button tightly underneath. 
Then I just close the belt in back and put the shoulder strap on. Heh, <laughs> strap on. And then I've got a little bitty scrap of blue sock that I've folded and twisted and wrapped in a small piece of leather to make Charlie's hipster man bun. And we're back to the basket. I've got all my fish in there and ran my thread through the gap in the weaving to stitch it directly to the back. Eight fish in the basket and one for the hand. Just a pretty simple tack job, and that's game right there. That is 100%. And so there he is, our new friend Chum Chucker Chuck. I know this was a long video, but I just want to take a couple seconds to, uh, you know, do a, a, an overall critique of my build here. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with it, but I wish that I had uh, been able to hunch him a little bit better if I had planned this out and not been lazy about it. I could have made a, a more hunchy shape so that his head is a bit more like down here as opposed to up here as it is uh, in the render. Uh, I also am not a huge fan of what I did with the basket. I mean, it's on there, but upon closer inspection, it's, I mean, you can just see the, the stitching in there. It was more just to get it up, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes a guy's got problems. Sometimes a chuck's got problems. Uh, but other than that, you know, I really like the way this thing turned out. Uh, I, I like the, the overall color, theming here, everything matches. Uh, very charismatic doll, IMHO. So, I want to thank you all for joining me for a, another riveting episode of Let's Stitch, and uh, hope to see you again next time. Right, Chumbly? Chumble, you can't say stuff like that on YouTube, you silly b**** What was it? What? Oh, oh, oh my god, he was underneath the dog the whole time.